Hi everyone, this is Belize. Welcome back again to my channel. This is a podcast called Fate Series Podcast. And um, if you're new here, hello. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back again. Today I'll be making um, a new video talking about prayer and why some prayers are not answered. So stay tuned and hear what the Lord has for you. Thank you. The topic of today is unanswered prayers. Um, have you ever prayed in your life? You know, you just pour your heart out to God and he just seems like he ha he doesn't listen and he's not answering your prayers. Well, today I'm going to give you four points, four reasons to why, actually not four reasons, how many? One, two, three, four, five, five reasons to why your prayers might not be getting answered. I want to start off by saying that God hears. Um, one of the things he says is that his ears are not deaf, that he cannot hear. So God, when you pray, God hears. And always know that when you're praying, he's right beside you. It's not like he's going to, you know, you're, you're praying and he's going to answer you in three to four business days. I mean, he's going to hear you in three to four business days. It's not like you're, you know, sending a mail that's going to take a while to reach him. God when you pray to him, he's a, a person that's close to you and he will hear whatever you say. But he, he usually gives few answers to you. The first answer he'll give you is a yes. The second answer is a wait. And the third answer is a no. Um, and today we'll dive deep into the no's and why he, he might reject your prayers or, you know, why your, answer, your, your prayers might not be getting answered. Another thing in his word, he says in Matthew 7, in Matthew 7, 7 to 12, it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Um, the one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks you for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks you for a fish, or give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give you good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what, what you will have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. So in this verse is telling us that when we ask, he will he, he hears. When we ask, he hears, he responds. When you knock, he, it will be opened. When you seek, you will find. That is what our Heavenly Father is telling us. And as much as we know how to give the best gifts to our children, um, to the people that we love, it is the same way he is always willing to hear you. He is always willing to give you, but it's according to his will when you pray it needs to be according to the will of God the number one reason to why prayers do not get answered is because it's a prayer of an unrepentant sinner meaning that you are a sinner um you you come to God in prayer fill thee with sin you know you're filled with anger filled with hatred filled with all types of sin that God does not like that the God despises and you come before him in prayer expecting him to answer but that is one of the reasons why God will not listen because if a person is not repentant he says you need to be you know you before you come before God God is a holy God so what you also need to do is repent repent your sin come before God because as holy as he is he expects you to be holy as well so with the least you can do is just, you know, repent, come before God, repented. Um, and it's shown here in Isaiah 59, 1. If we go and read there, it says, Sin, confession, and redemption. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short that he can, you know, not to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that you will not hear. For your hand are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt, 
your lips have spoken falsely, your tongue um, speaks wicked things. No one calls for justice, no one pleads a case of integrity. They rely on empty arguments, they ulter lies, alter lies, they conceive trouble and give birth to evil. They hatch the eggs of viper and spin a spider's web. Anyways, it keeps going, trying to show that it's people, you know, coming into prayer. But in their prayer, they forget the amount of baggage of sin that they have. You know, as the Bible says, you're always speaking falsely. Um, they have, you know, stained with blood. They have so much guilt. They, their lips, you know, do they speak of evil. They are wicked. There's no justice. And then we come to God expecting that he will hear us. But that's not going to happen because God is a God of justice. God is a God of righteousness. God does not work with sin. So yes, the number one thing is that that stops God from hearing us, as he has said, is that, you know, his, his hand is not too short that he can save us, nor his ear too dull. He says, because of our sins, it is what has separated us, and that's why he is hidden our fa his face from us. So what we need to do is pray a repentant prayer and come before God as a repentant person, and God will hear your prayer. Um, the second reason to why God might not be answering your prayer or, you know, there's unanswered prayer in your prayers in your life is because you're praying prayers of with the wrong motives. In James 4, 3, it says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may that you may spend what you get on pleasures. Um, yes, so sometimes we humans, um, we pray from the wrong motives, you know, we come to God, you know, we, we ask him wanting to get what we get so that we can spend it on the wrong things. You know, for example, you ask, um, you ask God, you know, God, I need you to give me money so that I can, you know, um, buy this many houses, buy this many cars, you just, you know, want to show off. You want to show off to others that you have this amount of cars, you have this amount of houses, um, you know, prayers where you, you pray and um, you ask him to, to give you certain stuff, but it's coming from the wrong motives. What he's going to give you is that you will use it for the wrong things and that is not what he wants. He wants you to use whatever um, resources, whatever big or small thing that he has given you, you need to use it for the glory of God not for, for the glory of yourself, for the glory of men to be, you know, looked upon, to be proud. God despises that. So when we pray, we need to pray with the right motives, pray with the motives that glorify God because our lives are not meant to glorify ourselves but to glorify our Creator and our Lord Jesus Christ. Another reason is that your prayers are not persistent. You pray and then because you haven't received your answers ASAP in a few seconds, you just give up. Um, such, prayers, such prayers are usually become unanswered prayers resulting of because of the, the decision you have taken not to pray again. But God wants you to pray and persist in prayer. He says pray without ceasing. Every single day, every single time, pray without ceasing. Um, and it's shown, um, one of the verses I have seen is that why why it's important to pray without ceasing is that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Their powers, the principalities, their rulers, the evil spirits in, in, in different realms that stop our prayers from, you know, reaching and from impacting us as they're meant to. So what we need to pr do is pray without ceasing. Pray persistently because God hears and he most of the times he's already given you the answer. But then because of those, uh, you know, powers, principalities, evil spirits in the space, your prayers do not get to you in time. And we can see that with the story of Daniel. When we look at Daniel 10, 10, it is the time that God had given him a vision. And um, I will just read it out so you guys can hear it. Daniel vision of a man 
In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel. <clears throat> um, its 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 message was true and concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice of food, no meat, no wine, touched, touched my lips. I used no lotion at all until three weeks were over. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing at the bank of the great river, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold around his waist. His body was like topaz, like his face like lightning, his eyes flaming torches, his arms and legs were like gleam of burnished bronze, his voice like sounds of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were around me did not see. Such terror overwhelmed me. Um, okay, we keep going. Um, and he says, the guy that you know, Daniel say, so he said, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and humble yourself before God, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. But the prince of Persia kingdom resisted me 22, 21 days. The Michael one of the chief princes came to help me because I was detained there by the king of Persia. Now I have come to you to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerning a time yet to come. And he also keeps going and says, so he said, you know, at the last bit it says, so he said, do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I go, the prince of Greece will come. But first I tell you what is written in the book of, of truth. Um, okay. Anyways, so here we see that um, Daniel had actually gone into prayer for three weeks he ate no meat he ate no you know good foods put no lotion no nothing um and he was praying to god because he wanted to save the the israelites because they had gone into captivity um and they were had been enslaved so what he did he felt sorry for the people and began praying and god heard his prayer and matter of fact god had already answered the prayer but then we hear that in the vision is that there were kings there were princes and kings of persia or greece which are you know principalities in the spiritual realm that had blocked his answers had blocked the answers god had given him so god because he kept praying he did not stop he kept praying until he saw the vision is that god um sent michael and this other angel to come fight those princes of Persia so that the, the answer would be given to him. And that is what happened. We see that that is what happens with Daniel. So I want to tell you that your prayers sometimes are not answered because you're not persistent. You need to keep being persistent no matter how long it takes, no matter how exhausting it is. Pray, pray because the enemy wants you to be exhausted. The enemy wants you to give up, but do not give up because God has an answer for you. God will answer your prayers when you persist. And you, it, it, as we have read before, is that keep not knocking and it shall be opened. Keep seeking and you will find, you know, all of that. Keep asking, you will receive all of that. It is said in the Bible. And the last reason why your prayer might not be answered is that you're praying a prayer of doubt, of unbelief, of lack of faith and trust in the God that you're praying to. Because God does not need you praying. If you don't believe in the God that you're praying, how do you believe that you will you will get what you're requesting for? God needs you to come to him with trust, with belief, without any doubt, because he's a God who's able, he's a God of the impossible. That is the God that we serve. And um, we see this in Matthew 21, 22. It says, 
Matthew 21 22 it says let's see Jesus replied surely I tell you if you have faith and do not doubt not only can you do what was done to the fig tree but also you can say this to this mountain go throw yourself into the sea and it will but it will be done if you believe you will receive whatever you ask you ask for in prayer so there is power in believing and having faith in our god because when we ask is not asking you know thinking that you know without any confidence that he's gonna do it he's a guy that does what he does and he will do it if you you know praying according to his will you're praying without any fear without any doubt it shows here that whatever you ask for if you believe you will receive in prayer that's what the bible says and then we go to mark 11 22 24 um in mark 11 22 24 it basically speaks the same thing it says have faith in god jesus answered truly i tell you if anyone says to this mountain go and throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart but believe that they say what they say will happen it will be done for them therefore i tell you whatever you do whatever you ask for in prayer believe that you are you have received it and it will be yours and when you stand in when you stand praying if you hold anything against anyone forgive them for so that your father in heaven may forgive your sins as well and this you know the, the forgiving bit it goes back to saying the the, the unrepentant prayer of a sinner um it, it goes back to what i was saying before is that you need to come before god repented um of your sins because when you don't forgive others when you still hold on to sins and grudges and whatnot your prayer is not going to be heard your prayer is not going to be answered and that's what has been said um when you if you hold anything if you hold anything against anyone forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive your sins as well and your prayers might be heard as well um yes so what we need to do is pray without any doubt and having faith in our god as the word has told us because the God that we pray to is a mighty God. The God that we pray to is a God who, you know, split the sea in half. And the Israelites were able to go cross through. The Bible says he is a God of the impossible. He's a Lord God of hosts. He's a God who will go before us, besides us, all around us. He's a God that you, when you pray, he hears. That his ears are not deaf. His hand is not shot that he cannot save. So with whatever situation you're going through right now, with whatever, you know, I'm pr prayers that have not been answered, I I want you to re-examine what I have spoken to you today. Um, go through them. You know, is it the, the prayer of you not being repentant? Is it the unbelief, the doubt that you have? Is it the wrong motives that you have? is it you not being persistent in prayer think about all those points that i have given you and if you feel like you've already you are already doing all of this and doing them right what i would suggest is wait on the lord because when you wait on the lord he has a very good plan for you and if you feel that you you know have done many or most of what i've spoken um change your ways and begin praying the prayers that will do you so much that will impact not only you but impact the greater you know greater community people around you as well because god wants to answer you god wants the best for you and god will offer you the best gifts that he can offer you thank you very much so i'll pray an ending prayer um and i hope that god will begin to work in your life as well so heavenly father i just want to pray for anyone on this anyone that watches this podcast i just pray that father god you will forgive them of unbelief and repentance that you will forgive them of the wrong motives that they might have had 
that you know cause you not to listen to their prayers i pray that you will give them the strength to be persistent in prayer and to know that they are not just praying that there is so much behind prayer that happens and father god i pray that you will hear the prayers that will bring to you from now on in the mighty name of jesus i pray and believe amen thank you very much for listening goodbye